Now we want to show more of more properties of conjugate functions, especially uh, those uh, properties which are related to uh, the subdifferential of the conjugate function and proximal points of the conjugate function. And um, we begin with the property which basically uh, implies that whenever we have a subgradient of f at a certain point, uh, we automatically get a subgradient of f star via uh, inverting argument and result. Okay, so this is property f. Um, so property f uh, is, so we just let x and a be points in uh, our space. Um, then uh, assuming that we have a in the subdifferential of f, um, then we can use a, a property d from a last video, which um, gave the relation that then f star um, of a plus f of x equals the inner product between a and x. So equality in the young Fenchel inequality. All right, and now um, we can use that um, that we can we can write f star at any other point just with the help of this supremum here, and therefore this uh, supremum is 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 and and therefore uh, f star of of any other point b. So f star of b is greater or equal than whenever we take this inside the supremum and evaluate it at uh, just some point here without, without caring if this supremum is attained. So then we certainly are not equal, but we, since the f star of b is the supremum over these expressions, we will be greater or equal. Uh, so f star of b will certainly be greater or equal than b uh, x in the product minus f of x. Um, uh, since uh, the f star of b is the supremum over these uh, things, maybe there exists uh, there exists a, a different point such that this is even even uh, this quantity is even bigger. Okay, so now we know that f of x is equal to uh, inner product ax minus f star of a. So this is equal to bx minus, and now we can use our expression for f of x. So minus inner product of a with x um, plus f star of a. Okay, this is exactly this equality here. And this basically gives us the result that, so this holds for all, um, for all b in h. This gives us exactly the result we, we needed, namely that uh, for all b in h, we have f star of b greater or equal than f star of a plus, and now we take the inner product of x with b minus a. And uh, this is like by definition the same as saying that x is in the subdifferential of f star at the point a. So whenever we have a in the subdifferential of f at x, we have x in the subdifferential of f star at a. And property f even holds without uh, assuming anything like convexity or lower semi-continuity about f, about the function f. So property f, yeah, you get it. Okay, so um, this shows that whenever we have some subgradient, we automatically get, get the subgradient of f star, not at the same point, but like inverting uh, argument and result, as I said. So now property G um, 
will deal with the case that f is um, a proper convex lower semi-continuous as we assumed in um, in the property E. So if f is proper convex lower semi-continuous, then uh, we actually have the uh, equivalence between those properties. So uh, this is uh, shown by using uh, D and E, in particular E is necessary. Okay, uh, how do we do that? Well, A in DF of X uh, is equivalent, as we wrote in property D, to F star of A plus F of X equals the inner product of A with X. And this is equivalent, and now we're using property E. So F star star is equal to F, so we can replace F with F star star at the same point. And now we can use property D again, this time with F star. Um, and this shows us that, um, yeah, okay, uh, that's probably, let's, let's write it like this. X is in the inner product of F star at A. So if you, if you use property D, with f star instead of f, then you get um, the f star, the conjugate of f star at the point x. So I also have to switch a and x, of course. Um, the, the conjugate at the point x plus uh, the, the, the function f star at the point a, um, are, uh, the, the result will be the inner product of a with x, and therefore um, x is in the subdifferential of f star at the point a. Okay, so this is um, the property which holds for proper convex lower semi-continuous function. So then we have the equivalence between those two. All right, and the last property is related to proximal points. So again, for proximal points, we always assume that f is proper convex and lower semi-continuous. And of course, uh, we uh, then have to use, uh, define a step size gamma greater than zero, and we just choose some point x in H. And uh, now it's not it's not as consistent for, with proximal points. It's not as consistent to separate uh, like the the primal point or the points x and the slopes a because they are mixed uh, with each other. Um, so now let's just take P equals proximal point of, um, of F uh, with step size gamma at some point X, uh, of F star, sorry, with step size gamma at the point X. We want to calculate um, this. So now we are using the, uh, the property of the proximal point, we have, we have seen that uh, having a proximal point is always equivalent with having some subgradient. And con more concretely, you have x minus p over gamma is in the subdifferential of f star at um, the point p. Okay, this is just from a, from a previous video. Okay. Now we have seen in G that uh, we can reverse this, and this is still equivalent. So F, e, uh, sorry, P is in the subdifferential of F at the point x minus P over gamma. Okay, and now, as we said, having a subgradient will always be equivalent with having a proximal point. 
but we want to have a, an alternative expression for uh, the point P. So we want to possibly elimin eliminate P from the argument of any proximal point of F we get. And it turns out that the solution, uh, so there is one, uh, one way to do so, and this will be, uh, so we want to have a proximal point of F certainly, and this will be taking the step size one over gamma uh, for F. Okay, let's just write this in, in the full glory. Um, the result of the proximal point will always be the subgradient. Um, sorry, will always be the point where we, where we get the subgradient. So we get, um, with, by taking a proximal point, the result will be the point where we evaluate the subgradient. Um, as we see here, um, the point where uh, the, the result of the proximal point will always be the argument to the subgradient. Okay, the argument to the subgradient is x minus p over gamma. So therefore, the result of the proximal point has to be x minus p over gamma. Okay, now let's continue our pattern matching. Um, so. Um, we take uh, the, the argument to the proximal point minus the result of the proximal point divided by the step size has to be p. Uh, okay, and the way to do this is to give x over gamma as the argument of the proximal point, and as we required, uh, does not contain any p. Okay, so we can later resolve this equation and have p uh, on one side. Let's just check that this is true. So x over gamma minus x minus p over gamma is just p over gamma, and we divide this by 1 over gamma, we get p. So this is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so we got this equivalent between proximal points with respect to f star and proximal points with respect to f, and therefore we can write uh, prox gamma f star of x equals, and now we just ta um, solve this equation by taking by uh, taking p uh, p on on one side of this, so we get x. So we do, we multiply with, by gamma um, and uh, add p and divide the proximal points. So get x minus gamma prox 1 over gamma f of x over gamma. Okay, so um, this is the equation for the proximal point of f star. And in particular, you see proximal point of, of uh, with, uh, with step size 1, uh, then all these gammas uh, go away and you have proximal point of f star with, uh, with step size 1 uh, of x plus proximal point of f with step size 1 of the same x will be x. So let's just write this in particular. You have prox um, 1 f star of x plus prox 1 f of x will be equal to x. Uh, so this is a, a very important special case and this is uh, parallel to the projection on, um, on orthogonal subspaces. Um, so and this is, 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 is a generalization of this in fact. So you know Whenever you have a point, you have a, a pair. Uh, yeah, we have a subspace in a, in an inner product space and the orthogonal complement. Um, you can always um, uniquely decompose the point into um, into a component on a subspace and into a component on the orthogonal subspace on the orthogonal complement. And this is a generalization of this property. You know that the proximal point. Um, with respect to an indicator function is a projection. And if you take the indicator function of these subspaces, then you get exactly 
um, the well-known relation for this uh, orthogonal decomposition. And with this, we conclude our properties. And in the next video, we're going to see some examples um, to, uh, to make um, this whole theoretical debate about conjugate functions more concrete.